Hello? <laughs> Best intro. Don't don't hit stop. Don't hit stop. But keep it in. <laughs> Hello and welcome. I thought you were going to say welcome. Hello and welcome to another episode of the Pointy Years podcast. My name is Matt. And I'm James, as oh. always. Yeah. This is part two of our tournament report for Blood in the Snow from Hull. If you haven't checked out part one, which talks about Matt's Gits Army, mm. really, really cool list, actually. Um, very off matter, I think. It's like Spider Fang. This character's off meta because Spider Fang, I don't think I've ever seen it up the top except for the cheaty one. The cheaty the, one. The cheaty one. The one where they take all trolls and one uh, Skitter Strand. Ah. Uh, okay. Faction for Grim Scuttle. Uh, oh, really? Grim Scuttle. I've yeah. not seen that. Okay. And then what it. I'll go around and tell you the secret. Check out their video too, but also check out Matt's. Yeah. <laughs> Matt's. Right, so, well, I'm going to tell you this now because I'm, I'm into it. Right. So, because in Grim Scuttle, you're forced to take a bad commentary and artifact. But uh, it goes on your first Spider Fan. And they don't take general. a character. We don't take a Spider Fan general. General, so you got Charles General. They, they have no downside. They get a, a spell ignore and reroll hits against Priest and Wizards for the Skitter Strand. It's almost nothing, but it, you might as well just take it. It's just free. That's so, great. Cheaty Spider Fan. That's cheaty. I like that. But check out his video anyway. Uh, here's a picture of our practice game that we did the night before. Hmm. As you can see, I'm playing the Daughters of Cain, which is the faction that I took. I just finished uh, painting them. So Man, seemed... they look so good. I, it, it's the bases that always get to me. Like, I, I really think it's such a good job, job with making like them defined. They've got so much definition. I really like them. Thanks very much. Um, let's move on from that before I blush. Um, so the army I took. So I'm kind of a new Daughters of Cain player. I used to play Dark Elves. And when AOS 2 started out, I put some of my Witch Elves on round bases, but I'm just coming back to them and just getting into painting the snakes. So part of what I wanted to do, making my, I've not even reinvented the wheel or anything. I'm very meta, but I'm also quite simple. I've got, I've got five or six War Scrolls total because I didn't have time to get practice games beforehand, except uh three four games on tts mm. and i had my first game in person with the painted army because i was still painting them on tuesday this week and then i had another game against matt yeah. on friday so i didn't want to do anything too complicated because we had two hours 45 minute round times and i just wanted to be conscious about finishing games and i think Daughter, daughters is, is quite a powerful army so I don't think you really need to do anything special to, to to have a chance of winning games. So I took, I was going all snakes. So I took, um, obviously, the big queen snake. Uh, I took the blood rack Medusa. I spoke to some people on Discord that were, who were helping me as well with, Do with Daughters of Cain. Uh, if you've got a new army, Discord is a great place to go because there's usually someone online you can get an an answer immediately about some like questions. Yeah, shout out to AOS Coaches Discord. There's so many helpful people in there. We frequented a lot as well. Get on there. It's so useful for meeting people who are ready to help you. Yeah, that one. And I'm also on Daughters of Cain Discord. I think it's just called cool. Daughters of Cain Discord. That's a, oh. a secret one you didn't know about. That's why I asked this about. Justin Jar Jar, I think is the guy that gave me some advice. Uh, thank you to him. But yeah, he, he advised me. So I knew I was taking Zelius Orator, 4 plus rally. Question. Uh, that gives you a 4 plus rally? Yeah. How much rallying did you do? Oh, I did so much rallying. Really? I did so much rallying. Okay, I'll wait to hear more. Um, partly, partly because I've taken you, I've taken units of, everyone takes a unit of 15 blood sto uh, sisters, stalkers, the archer ones. Because the Morafis Kamal ability to fight twice. I also took a unit of 15 Blood Sisters, the Fighty Snakes. I could have gone 10 10 because I've got 20 total. Um, but I wanted to take I wanted to take 15. The five man unit is kind of a kind of a screen and it benefits from the faction abilities. I didn't have all I didn't have all my canary paint as well, but I kind of wanted to see what a 15 block can do. It's got a great attack uh, turn to crystal. You just need to be within an inch after you've fought of an enemy and you just roll a dice for each model on a two plus. A two plus, you do a mortal wound. Yeah, that's so, so scary when I'm playing yeah, Kragnos. So, if you charge into me and you're doing that many mortal yeah. wounds, I die. 
15, on a 7, 20 point model. 15, 15 guys are, are doing about 11, 12 mortal wounds, so, so sometimes more. So I, I wanted to try that, and I also thought it'd be quite good with rally. And there were there were a few times um, where they went down to to like three, four models, and you rally them back up, and you get six, six or seven guys guys back. I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but I, I really like the unit fifteen blood sisters. I would recommend. Um, another person also liked it, but uh, we'll, we'll point that out a bit later. Um, and the only non snake I. Th- thing i've got is the life takers uh they're the fighty ones you can say i'm two thousand points if i had five more points i would have taken the other ones but these guys were fine they just i just used them as a screen in four out of five battles and uh i kind of needed this i needed a, a second screen and they're, they're 90 points so they're a lot of them got five wounds they're not a perfect screen but if they don't get hit they can nip on an objective they can uh, cause a few problems. So uh, I thought they were okay. Uh, they they, they did, did more than expected. Uh, the artifact on the blood rack, Medusa, I take the shadow stone, gives me plus one to cast low shadow. She's got mind razor, so her job is basically to spam mind razor. And How many stones does she get? Just one. She's got one cast and two two unbinds. Oh, so okay. her, her job is mainly just to cast mind razor. Was she casting and... much else in your games? No, she, she, she only cast mystic shield once or twice when my, mm-hmm. when she was out of range for mind razor um okay. but yeah so, so that that was bit, her job is that and to the bloods the the snakes she can move them up the blood rights table so in turn two you've got plus one to run in charge but when you get to turn three you get plus one to hit so she can just bump them up to that so in turn two you're doing turn three so it's like witch proof for the snakes but uh that, that was quite useful, uh, but it was a little difficult to get the 15 in all the time because she doesn't want to be too close because you're using her for rally and everything. So mm-hmm. it's easy to keep her in 18. It's a bit harder to keep her in 12. Um, so th- that was my army. Pretty simple, but I was glad I took a simple list. Uh, I think if you're going to like a first tournament or something, just cut down those war scrolls. Simple things. You, you know what you're doing. You can make, make a reasonable plan with them. Mm-hmm. So my first game, I was up against a Seraphon list uh, from Lee. Now you can, the first thing you notice is this insanely massive Dread Saurian model. I just can't stop looking at it. it. And it, it was beautiful. It's like this lovely turquoise it, color. This photo doesn't do it justice, but I'd say look at Marathi's base size. Yeah. And then think you could fit like eight of her bases into that Dread Saurian base. It was She's just, not small. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was amazing. So this was my first appointment Lee. Uh, he was wonderful. He, he was doing a good thing about uh, how to learn to get good at Age of Sigma. So he's coming from 40k, and this was his first 2,000-point battle. So he was just he, he was just like, I'm going to go to a tournament. I'm going to get five games in quick. I'm going to learn. And every game he was asking his opponents, like, what can I do better? And and trying to learn about screens and things. So I think the, the game against me, he was like, I'm just going to charge my Dread Saurian in do some damage and things at the end of it he was he was thinking more i'm going to use it as, a, as an anvil it's 35 wounds it's got minus one damage because of the faction it was in um so he, he was just learning on the fly great one to learn um f- for this game a lot of a lot of our games in the first first day they're all uh, three or two objectives in the middle so this one i kind of I practiced, we, we practiced a scenario the night before, and I did kind of a similar thing, but I used the building a bit of the screen as well. So there's actually some canary, I think, behind the building. Oh, no, no, I put them in deep strike. Normally, I put canary on the other side to try and screen off my fighty snakes, but I put them in deep strike because of the building. But I'm using the small unit of snakes on the other side, and I'm starting off in a castle. This list was quite a castly list, especially because I took the Blood Rat Medusa instead of the Iron Scale, which gives run and charge, um, which I kind of regret. I think if I was doing it again, I, I, I would take the Iron Scale. What yeah. do you think about run and charge? I think it's over? amazing. Um, in, in Especially lists, not lists, battle plans that go wide, you need that. Um, because otherwise you're just going to be stuck in the middle. You're not going to control all the objectives. You're just stuck there. You're not scoring. If you're not scoring, you're not going to win. Yeah, the the, the first the first day I didn't miss it too much because we've got these like narrow ones. But the yeah. certainly day two when we had some wider battle plans, uh, I missed it a lot. Yeah. Um, the 
th this game, the, the 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 big dinosaurs came in. They did some damage. They took out unit five snakes. Um, but the, just the power of the the daughter of the canes uh, coming back. The dread Sauron got taken off the first turn, um, and then second turn he lost he lost his two um, uh, T Rex uh, carnosaurs. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the game, the game finished. Marathi eating the slan, and then she got killed, which was good because I had the grand strategy of um, bloodthirsty zealots. It's kind, of, it's kind of a strange one. I had to explain to my opponents um, as well. It's, it's weird. You each unit in my army has to have fought, so they need to. The way I read it, they need to actually have made a melee attack, so not just charge, but but got in and, and, and tried to kill something. They don't need to kill something. Or they need to be destroyed. So it, it, it's kind of hard because your bow snakes, usually your archers, you want to hide them. You don't want them anywhere near the enemy. But you need to get them to fight. If they're not destroyed and you don't fight, you don't get the battle tactic. So do you think you should maybe have taken a different grand strategy then? Look, I got it every time, but it, oh, okay. it but you have to be you have to be conscious of it. Like it is possible for your opponent to deny it, but you, you really have to try to get it. So in this game, I didn't table my opponent. I, I had a chance to, to to take off some of his guys, but I was running my archers across the board and running my blood sisters away just to just to try try and get them in. And Marathi Marathi got killed in every single game but you right. you wanted her obviously you don't want her to die before the before you you've got a chance but if she dies little marathi dies and she's, and she's destroyed weird. yeah this is it's a bit strange at the end of some of the game if you're losing it's easy to complete but if you happen to be winning then you have to think when you get into round four round five i gotta get them in a position to either get destroyed or, or have a chance of fighting i guess it's another argument for like scoring high early because if you're going to get tabled, then you're getting a grass strategy anyway. Whereas yeah, with a lot of grass strategies, if you're tabled, you, you're just not getting it. Yeah, so that's the extra three points down. So as long as you go like like a bunch of points in the first three or four rounds, it doesn't matter if you're losing all your models. So you can, I guess you can play a bit more recklessly, bloodthirstily. Yep. Bring your daughter to the slaughter. Uh, second opponent were, was Ryan. Uh, he was a lovely guy as well. Mm. And he brought... He brought Flesh Eater Courts, so I, I I've played Flesh Eater Courts, so I, I was I was quite happy to see this list just because whoops, just because I knew everything that it does, so all the, all the items and so on, and I, I'm kind of used used to their strategy and and play style of of trading and and trying to get getting the big hits with the the terror guys. What did the the battle line terror guys do in the game? Because I thought I saw that I thought that was a bit. So yeah, the, I thought that was really cool. First. Yeah, I mean it is it's, it's it's definitely really cool. It was a, it was a mixed bag for his terror guys. So one of them one of them did really well. So I I charged with Marathi uh, into the one in in the top. Mm -hmm. uh, he was trying to I think he was trying to draw me out a bit with it, and Marathi, Marathi kind of whiffed. Mm -hmm. And so he got he got in three damage. Yeah. And then the next turn. I managed to. He he also has a fight on death ability. So I I thought I was losing six wounds because I tried I tried to roar. I failed my roar. He gives it fight on death. So even if Marathi kills kills him, he gets the fight back. Mm -hmm. And you need to put that. Everyone calls it the Marathi tax. You need to put three wounds on her every turn because she she can only take three wounds in a turn. So every turn you get three wounds. You've paid the tax. You're doing well. But if he fights on death, I can't stop it. Mm -hmm. So I roared. I I didn't realize that until it was going to happen. But I roared anyway because you always want to roar against uh, flesh eaters because their feeding frenzy, their fight twice is so good. You just want to avoid that. So so it survived. And then 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 the next time I had to fight it again. So yeah. I've taken three wounds because I didn't kill it. Mm. And then I have to fight it again. It this time I successfully roared. But when they die, they like explode. All the bats that live inside the terror guys fly out, and you take two, three moles. Nasty. Wonder, it's wonderful. I think it's like all units are around, but again, it's 
he dies, but he's, he's, he's paying the tax. He's doing some wounds. I don't think he got three that turn, but he did mm -hmm. a little bit of damage. The other terror geist uh, hit a unit of five snakes. It killed two of them, maybe two and a half, Good. including its freedom frenzy. So it attacked twice. Oh. And you'd only got two and a half snakes? Yeah, it killed, it killed half the unit oh. after fighting twice. So I had, I had five snakes. I went down to two and a half. He just whiffed on his dice. Wow. Terror, terror guys can be spiky. They, the, um, their draw attack it only hits on fours. If you get six, you do six moles. But it only hits on a four. Uh, Ryan rolled really badly. Uh, and I think I did seven wounds to it back because two of the snakes died and they fought on death. Mm -hmm. And then the other three snakes fought. Marathi was in combat, so she gives them an extra uh, attack if they were in 18. Uh, and then I've got my touch to crystal back with three of them. So I actually did more damage. So it was a mixed bag, but that's just the way terror guys go. It's, it's just look, if you've got a ghoul king on top. I find it's so it, funny that they're more swingy than trolls. Yeah, they're, like they're a probably troll swinging a hammer is less swingy than giant monster. That's yeah, been yeah, any... that, that, that's what I have. But I mean, wow. they're, they're, they're quite good. If you put a rider on, you're not getting in much more. You're getting five more red one attacks. Okay. The ride is just giving you the spell casting and the the war score spells, which are really good. Mm -hmm. It's giving you a summon. Okay. And it's only a hundred and sixty odd more points. Uh, it keeps changing. Um, and you summon a unit. So use this better to take rider, mm -hmm. but you need the battle line, right? You can't. You can't take. You can't take four what does heroes. What Gristle get you? Is it Victor Moon? Gristle. No, Gristle God gives you battle line terror guys. It gives you a general. I think it's a command trait. But it's run in charge. The, art, oh, the well, artifact he gives you is nice. is kind of useless. It's once per game, roll over the wounds to kill a model. But the always strikes first good on the charge. Darkness. Yeah, maybe maybe good against them. But they, they always strikes first on, on the charge is, is, is amazing. Because then flesh eaters just don't want to be hit. So it was a bad matchup for him because the bow snakes, they're like, like yeah, they're hitting, they're doing more wounds. And, and, so hard to avoid. Yeah. and then they don't have that many wounds for the points that the flat. It, it, it was it was a good game, um, and remember the summoner uh, about Feck. They can play the objective game really really well because they can summon in all the quarters and, and so on. Uh, the next game I played against Seb with Beast of Chaos. Oh man, I gotta say, you, you gotta look at that Hearthstone. Oh, it's insane. Do you see how it's got like hair and a mustache? Not only that, but the carpet matches the drapes. It's just it's so funny. I'm, I'm stealing that. I apologize. Part. I, I apologize to the viewers for that. But yeah, <laughs> that's what it is, though. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> so, so I'm I'm two and zero. I know I'm probably gonna get getting to getting stronger list every every time. And here when, it comes. Yeah, when I saw this, oh my god, this is a this is a nightmare. Nightmare list. Steel Knight and, yeah, right? and the it, Battle Lion. Yeah, but it, oh, battle line, oh. they're, they're not Battle they're Bounty oh, Hunters. Yeah. So mm. he's got two units of six discs. So he's got he's faster than me. The Bounty Hunters, they've got three different attacks on their profile. They've got the Rider, the Rider's big, and the disc. They're all getting plus one damage against yeah. basically my entire army. Uh, they get a lot of rend in this in this, but I don't have a I don't mind so much about the rend because there's that. there's no armor saves in daughters daughters either. But yeah, it was very it was so scary. He's he's summoning with his shag off every turn, doing three doing attacks damage. With the spear, two yeah. of the beaks, D three attacks with the horns. Yeah, so that, that's seven the, attack yeah. model. Yeah, six and then the next one is champion. Yeah. And they're doing they're doing a lot of damage. So they're really they were really, really scary. Uh, again, we've kind of got like a narrow scenario. We've got two objectives in the middle. Uh, and he's also got expert conquerors. I was not expecting to win this one. And I've, I've only played beasts once before. This is after his turn one. Yeah, so this, this you can see if you look, yeah, if you look at the map after turn one, uh, he moved, I think this is part way through turn one. Mm -hmm. He decided to play it aggressively. I gave him the first. I gave him the first turn. Uh, I was battle regiment, and I think I think I didn't go against anyone who was battle regiment. So I gave everyone the first turn. Right. Uh, I don't want to be double turned with daughters. Pretty much all elf armies don't like to be double turned, mm. but uh, but especially against sisters as bounty hunters. So I screened again. Uh, I'm using Marathi kind of as a screen uh, or an anvil because I know she can't die. So I've got Big Marathi, Little Marathi, some snakes, and then some some canaries. Some of them have died, but there's some canaries. I'm trying to scream off as much as I can. 
but but it's really hard i probably set up a little bit too far forward but the objectives are in the middle so it's I'm kind of between a rock and a hard place but but my opponent decided to to gamble a bit he moved his um Zanzagor enlightened uh, quite close and he had to make maybe a six inch charge from the top of the building uh into the canary and i think he was looking for a longer charge to get into right. maybe this fight snakes or the bow snakes uh, the hard charge go, go, go yeah. down diagonally yeah it's, it's going down diagonally from the building and also like he, he could pile around the canary to get some in if he'd made that hard charge yeah he won't get them all in but he might not have needed to because we'll come to that later but the they failed the charge and the the uh, others other enlightened <laughs> They also tried to charge as well on the, on this side. I think maybe charging into Marathi, or maybe trying to charge charge over to get the uh, the my hero that I'd hid behind the the building because he has got all these shooty Zanzgor as well uh, at the back uh, on discs. Yeah, how were the shooty Zanzgors? Uh, they weren't quite as good as they are in in Cinch for their shooting because Cinch can use the fate dice to like get like just do a six to all get them all. Right. but. They can rally really well in this, so in, oh. you can't pick them off as well. So if you if you kill two of them, he can try and rally. Now he actually rolled poorly on his rally rolls. Uh, I think he got one back, mm -hmm. and four times he failed. He might not even got one back. He he did poorly on his roll. This game this game I needed a lot of luck, and I I definitely got a lot of luck. Right. So he, he failed he That's failed he failed his charges, and then I got the turn. So I'm just gonna try and do. Pew, pew. As much damage as I can, yeah, pew pew. So I hero phase shoot the Zanzar going to build in. I shoot them again in hero phase. That takes them out. Uh, I move Marathi up between the Zanzar on foot and the Enlightened. In case he redeploys, I want to be I want to be able to hit something without having to make a long charge. Mm -hmm. He does redeploy the disc. He got a good redeploy. Uh, so I moved the the uh, sisters the blood sisters up um thinking that my unit 15 can probably just wipe them out yeah but they've still got quite a lot of wounds they've got 24 wounds but i think they've uh, is that the enlightened or the on the discs on the discs uh so, so because they moved away i thought maybe rafi might miss a charge i have to kill them because it, if they hit me i'm just dead so mm -hmm. it's one of those things he hits me i die i hit him he probably dies Right. It's just who does it first. Now he's got the movement. Two glass cannons shooting yeah, at each other. Yeah, he fa he failed his charge, so I I I go in to do that. Um, the blood sisters they get in, but it's not a high charge. So when I'm fighting them, I haven't got all of my blood sisters. In. I've maybe got like like nine. I think I had nine of them in. Uh, but Marathi's in combat. They get an extra attack. Hmm. I kill four. I kill four of his discs in total. And I think I think I've done enough. The discs fight back. They kill. Two. They kill. Yeah, just two of them. They killed ten or eleven of my snakes. Oh, just geez. like that. <laughs> just like that. Just two of them. Yeah. Look. Luckily. <laughs> I mean, luckily in a way, he killed enough of them that I'm removing the casualties from the front. One, so I can do my fight on death. But also, if you let, if if you all my guys die, he might get the next turn. But if they die out of combat, I still get to rally at the start of the hero phase. It doesn't matter mm. who's. That's a good a good thing. To, it's like uh, a good tactic, yeah. Let's go into that. Office. Talking about a fight on death, I've asked in a lot of discords. I asked uh, one of the best Daughters of Kane's players, I think the best one in England at the moment, um, about how to do the fight on death because it's a bit complicated. Yeah. So what will happen is your opponent will do the damage it's only it's only if they die from a melee attack so it's not a stomp it's not uh shooting anything like that they do all their attacks simultaneously you get your wounds so say you get 10 wounds five of your snakes are going to die you don't just take five you can't just take five snakes off and say they'll fight on death you need to choose one snake to die you need to pile him in individually so he's in range to fight now you can still fight for a gv or something but they need to be in range to fight they need to remain in coherency so so After you to the first one fights do you then remove it yeah do yeah the one? once it's fought you remove it and then you choose another one to die wow. that one moves so you so it's quite tricky you you want to practice that and there were, there were a few times where 
I was hitting a strange situation and I had to look at it and think and try and maximize how many you're going to get. Mm-hmm. Uh, so just be, be careful with that. But th- this this game, I, I killed those. Marathi went into the big unit of Zanzagor and he did the same thing. I, I killed I killed half a unit, half a unit ran away, but he left them, he left them near enough to Hearthstone that he could rally them back. And they came in, my Blitzer sisters rallied back, but they came in and hit them and, and took them out. Uh, and the the rest of this game was just, just what was left of our battle line, uh, our armies kind of jinking in and out, trying to complete our battle tactics and stuff. Mm-hmm. And I, I, just, I just pipped it at the end. I didn't I didn't get the double turn until the last turn. I thought any time I did get the double turn, it would have been enough to, to, to really make it a victory but i didn't get to the last turn and it was just pipping him then mm-hmm. um but yeah that, that was that was a that was a really stressful day uh game um but i enjoyed it uh so we went to bed i'm three and oh i'm feeling good yeah. um but it's a new art yeah it's, it's a new army and i felt like i felt like i'm driving a sports car like it's a powerful army I'm driving a sports car but i don't quite have control of it like i'm going down these country roads and i haven't i haven't slided or skidded off yet but at any moment, though, the wheels could come off. That that's kind of the feeling I had. But I was I was quite excited. Uh, day two, and I, I knew my point the night before. Uh, th- this this was a uh, P- Peter, and he was playing Sylvan F. Uh, I play Sylvan F. That's I'm, so I'm, many bugs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I'm I'm ex- more experienced with Sylvan F, but I've never played with this many bugs. I, I've got I've got six of them, and this list again, they're in bounty hunters, and I've just played the beast list. So I know, like, I I, I understand. Scared of bounty yeah. By that point. yeah, yeah. And they've got strike and fade. So if he kills my snakes, I will get my fight on death. But as I said to him, it's not that useful because the seekers have got five wounds each, and if if they slay a model and they've taken wounds, the end of the combat they just they just re- regenerate all of that. So you need to kill actual bugs. He's got other ways to bring books back. The Seekers can bring them back. They've also got a five up rally. He did a great, he did a, some great work in this game. So one of the taxes that he does, uh, for example, at one moment I killed four of the bugs in one unit. Now they've got a five up rally. He, he, he agonized over this decision. He wanted to get in to, uh, I think it was my bow snakes, uh, but it might. I think he ended up actually going into my fire snakes. He wanted to go into them, and it, it was kind of a long distance, so he didn't rally in his hero phase because the seeker bugs they have an ability on a two up. They can bring back a model, so he was able he was able to move as far forward as he could, um, and then bring back the model, and then bring back that at the at the front of the unit to with his charge. Yeah, and to make it so I couldn't redeploy, so he can move it. He can go. Wow. He can go like nine point zero zero one, and then yeah, bring yeah. one back. There's like there's like an inch inch gap for coherency yeah, within two, oh, yeah. and their bases are huge. Yeah, the bases are huge. So he's adding like two or three inches to his chart. <laughs> so so yeah. I'm getting to Florida. Like like the opponents have got like just just fantastic play. Like, like I was re- I was really impressed with that, and just just not instantly going like i've got five plus rally maybe i'll get one because he's like what if i get two i'm gonna mess up my strategy so he played this he played this really well he played it very casually uh which was the right way i was worried about that because i don't have the run and charge ability from the iron scale because i've got the medusa my marath has got a good threat range but and my bows can shoot but i can't i can't really get to people so he's striking fading and he's getting out of range again um this one started again. I gave him the first turn. He's got the War Song bomb as well. It's I tried I tried to put my wizards in the middle, but he can put his War Song wherever, and it's the long board edge. So there was kind of no way for me to to get in and bind. He had a big War Song, so he did he did quite a few wounds on my snakes. He got he paid his Marathi tax. Uh, he was really good about doing that every turn. But he got he got four wounds on my general, so he only has six wounds, and she's the one with the four plus rally. So he had a big decision. He's got the Celestian Prime uh, in his list. Celestian Prime. Celestian Prime, yeah. Oh yeah. So no, he's put it in reserve, 
every turn it's in reserve it gets more attack it gets two more attacks it starts with three five seven and they're, they're big attacks so usually you'd bring it around maybe round two mm -hmm. um well round two's a bit early now yeah, yeah yeah round two maybe round three when did he bring it in he brought it in in round one That's so, insane. so wow. it's nine so it, it was a good decision so he's done he's in four wounds to my general mm -hmm. he's got a shooting attack where it's automatic hit you just do d3 models so he was like he was like i've got a 66 percent chance of doing two models and i've got a six up save right so he, he kind of gambled he, he he brought it in he can hit he can hit three i think he hadn't i think he hadn't finished paying them right maybe he had he picked three units he come down but he was trying to kill the 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 my general yeah uh, and he he got two, and I didn't I didn't I didn't save it, mm -hmm. so he took her out. For my turn, I was able to get in, get a battle tactic, uh, and he also killed the canary with him, get a battle tactic uh, and kill him. Mm -hmm. But that that's a huge loss because I've lost the ability to rally. Mm -hmm. So his his army is trying to pick. If he doesn't wipe me out, he's at least trying to pick me off. So, and his second turn, he was able to get his bugs into my snakes. He didn't roll that well. Uh, and I had I had six or seven left. Uh, and I killed those couple of books in return. That so we're talking about a rally, but I wasn't able to rally any of them back because I mean I could have rallied like 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 two or three back, but if she if if he hadn't killed his general, then I could have rallied half of them back and then half of them back again before he gets to to have a turn. Right. So that it was a big it was a big loss losing losing the Zelius Orator. Um, but this this game was uh, I moved Marathi forward, uh, trying to get into his bugs. I did get into them. The bows got some shots off, but his bugs just keep coming back. I really needed to get a double turn between uh, one and uh, between one and two or two and three. I think if I got that, it might have been close. But he's got his tree reverence doing his um, uh, strategies. This is when I remembered. Well, I didn't remember. My poet told me that uh, bar true lines. If it's a galley vet, you get the extra point. Yep. So he did. He did that with his tree reverence, um, which, which, which was great to know. So I think even even if I had got a double turn, I think I'd have lost this one just just because his his tree reverence doing the battle tactics. But it was it was a really it was a really fun game. Uh, my opponent was great, and my opponent uh, my opponent was really nice. So I had at the end I just had one snake and mm -hmm. he could have just moved his uh moved his um seekers away from them. Sure. But I said please kill this snake because it hasn't fought in the, it hasn't fought in combat yet. Um. So uh so 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 he killed my snake. So that that was a good game and uh I learned. I'm just trying to think. That's how he did, did the extra smart things. Yeah. Okay. yeah, he did. He did other really <laughs> smart things too. So another smart thing was when Ren Marathi was going into his uh, seekers, uh, and my bow snakes also shot on that turn. They were outside. They were outside of his wood. The first three, and in the shooting, I killed the first three. So he, he killed the front of the three, not only to make my charge longer, but he only made a. It made like a three inch charge maybe a five inch charge i got plus one to charge in in that turn but it made his all his guys in cover so that was a good thing another good thing he did he's got a um, templates of the woods because some some sometimes it's really hard to like get things in with the wings and so on so you can you can you can put the templates down so i thought that was a really good thing and just for transport as well like we've all moved mm -hmm. our silver neff armies i've and been it, in my woods yet, yeah so I've just, I've just got paper printouts yeah right <laughs> yeah so it's a bit of an, I, I got my woods but like but go through he, he's really good he went through it before me and said I've, I've got these things do you mind if i use them and like some models fly so they could be like on top of the trees we went we went through it and stuff so just go through that with your opponent and i'm sure your opponent will be fine um but if they're not, they let it respect that as well. Uh, so the last one I faced, so I'm three one now, uh, and I've got this Iron Jaws uh, list. What what do you see here, Matt? <laughs> what are these? Oh, it's your favorite the, brand. It's about, this, uh, bounty, hunters. bounty hunters. So the the, the this is so scary to me, man. Yeah. It's, it's horrifying the the incarnate I, I don't think the incarnate's too bad for you. You've got a lot of ways to deal with it. Yeah, but I think if he gets the, his rolls right. You could take the incarnate off and it's still got tailwind. Yeah, so the 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 incarnate is not as scary as another list because Marathi can kind of deal with it. 
Uh, yeah, those things are also amazing. Yeah. yeah. So big old little Marathi can kind of pin it and you can't run away and then both snakes can sh- shoot. Mm. This game did not go well for me though. Um, I fell it in the morning. Um, I made like a few not great decisions. I was just kind of forgetting things. I think I was kind of really tired and exhausted, like playing five. I'm not used to playing five games, games in a row. And this yeah, game, but with a TTS, it's just a couple games in a row at most, isn't it? Yeah, and I've done like three, three day tournaments. And last time we went to Shanghai, we played was four, four games. And in Kaifang, we played four games. But the, I think the fifth, the fifth game, I was just mentally flagging. So I made some horrendous errors, and my opponent was just. I think yeah he, he was like, I think he's his play he said he was yeah. played iron jaws for for a long time my point was Dan by the way so that he said he's played iron jaws for a long time and then he he just took a little break to play Nurgle and he was coming back to iron jaws because they can just do some really fun stuff but he he was very technical with it with his play like like um, especially with his Gorg runners the way he like positioned them for pylons like making like little like like three and three like this to get around at one point he added them all around marathi and you can make like a, a swirl so you've got like like one like this and one like this and one like this going all the way around so so he had lots, lots of really in, intricate things here like i th- i think he he hadn't played this particular list with the so much but like he was like like well oiled and well seasoned so he made some really good plays i i on the other hand did not make good plays uh he moved his incarnate up kind of to bait me yeah my stretch my what i kind of wanted to do was i i wanted big marathi free to maybe go after the mortar i've given i gave him the first turn and he just moved the incarnate up up towards me and he teleported uh some guys on that, that objective and he didn't he didn't move his gore grunters because again he's i don't have i don't have speed I've only got Marathi that's fast. So it's fine. I'm not Calibron, so I don't have the teleport, and I don't have the the um, Medusa to give me run in charge. So I, I I wanted little Marathi to go into the Incarnate, uh, but I, I just started making boo boos. So I I cast uh, the Withering on it, which was a good thing, and I cast Mind Razor, but I cast Mind Razor on Big Marathi, but Big Marathi wasn't gonna go in. So that was my first what my my first kind of mistake. Um uh, and I ended up moving Marathi up. I, I, I think I didn't do many wounds with Big Marathi's shooting attack and little Marathi. Oh, and another thing I'm because this was my plan for the start of the turn. I was I, I should have used the heroic uh, ability that daughters have to give like plus one attack to your hero. So she's got two attack profiles, so it give her two extra attacks. So just things like that. And by the I'd move Marathi up and by the time she, she by the time she got there, it wasn't looking like she'd do many wounds to the Incarnate, and I would just take, she would just, I'd take three wounds back and achieve nothing. So I ended up not charging in, and but I'd moved her out of range of my bow snakes to give them the double shoot. So I couldn't even double shoot at the Incarnate then. I also moved Marathi up, so he was able to redeploy out of range of the bow snakes, and it was just, it was, it's just little things like this. So I think there's just mental fatigue. Mm-hmm. So I think maybe the only way to practice that is to do more five day tournaments or, or something or learn to stay up for seventy two hours without sleep. <laughs> so I don't know. So there's a lot of mistakes like that. The biggest mistake I made though was I forgot that he had a, a teleport and I in the second he gave he won the he won the priority and he gave me the double. Because he was like, I can't do much with it. That's why I asked you about uh, giving the double in right. your game. Because in this one, he he knew I'm not getting over to him, um, and he's he 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 got a lot more points than me in the first turn. So I kind of thought I had a plan to. I moved my canary up. Uh, I auto charged them or auto ran them up to his pigs. They could get in the range of the pigs within twelve, but not the more crusher. But I thought if I get them in range of the pigs, and I um, the pigs can't do their special movement because they have to charge me because I'm winning twelve. Is that oh, called, what's that called? Destroyers. Mighty destroyers. Yeah, mighty destroyers is a hero phase move, but if you're within twelve, it becomes a charge. 
Yeah. So, so, so it's, 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 or maybe also a pilot if he were, if he were in three. Yeah, I, I, I think you can do that too. But I, I just didn't want him to, to charge across the map and, and get into my bow snakes. I was like, I'll sacrifice this unit of uh, Canari um, at, at the time. And I'd moved Marath, I moved Marathi back towards my snakes, but I moved her out of unbind range again mm-hmm. because I moved forward and backwards and I moved my snakes and my other things forward thinking maybe I can do something. But I moved them too far forward. I forgot about the teleport so although I turned off his mighty destroyers or, or, or reduced it, he can still move his more crusher. I thought I can maybe take his more crusher on its own. It'll take out a unit of me, but then Big Marathi can go into it and maybe do something. But he might destroyed his more crusher, uh, got it in a great position. He handed worked his more crusher. No, no. His more his more crusher his more crusher could move for Mighty Destroyer, had a once per game ability to move another 12. Yeah, uh, that's fast. I think that's faster. That's true. Yeah. And then he has his normal move. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then his charge. I think he had a 3d6 charge. So then who did he teleport? He teleported the Gore Grunters that I had got in range of the Canary. Right. So the Gore Grunters teleported behind my bow snakes. Right. So you're like, like here. Oh, yeah. Right, yeah. The screen. Yeah. So can't the, see. the, the, the Canary ah. were in a line. The middle tower, they're in a line between the middle tower I and see. the Gorkrunners, because my, my my battle tactic was Desecrate, so I Desecrated that in the middle. Um, the I find that I really struggled with these wider scenarios. I just don't have enough movement in this list, I think. It's, it's a bit too slow. But yeah, so he teleported them them in, and he, he he's able to give them a, three, a 3d6 charge. He gets plus one because he called the war, and he'll also be able to re-roll it with a command point. So he was able to charge them into the back of my bow snakes. Another mental blunder. I didn't even bother to unleash hell with them. Um, oh. <laughs> which I really should. I had, I had so many command points because I hadn't really had much chance to use them. I just all run that one just unit. Just in pure shock. Yeah. They're like, they're here. They're charging me. Yeah. It's, uh, I don't think it would have made any difference whatsoever, but I might have killed a pig. Might have killed That would have been nice. But they, um, they removed them. He charged in his more crusher, but again, he did it really smartly. My my fight snakes were in a line. I'd made them in a line because I didn't want them to be too wide because I wanted my bow snakes to get as far up as they could because it. I'm coming off this part of my, I just, I just want to get in range of something to shoot it. But he went on the end of the line, which meant that he wiped out the whole unit. He did 50 damage. I was very impressed with that. He's got a artifact called the Destroyer, which does uh, plus three damage on one weapon. Yeah. Once per battle. And he's got six or seven attacks with it, maybe. Loads. Yeah. I don't know. And he already does three damage or something. So he he did thirty attacks from his uh, war boss, of mm. uh, thirty damage, sorry, and another twenty damage from the Morkers itself. So that fifteen snakes were just gone. But I could only pile in and fight with five of them. Because uh, because of the way way my thing was, because I, I I I just won on the end. I had like two, and then just one on there, just the way it worked out. Um, so that was a great strategy. So if you're fighting against Daughters of Cain, try and think about doing things like that, or maybe might maybe try and split the unit or, or, or something. So yeah, so he is a, a great player uh, and played real. But it's it's my second time playing Iron Jaws. So what I did and what you should, everyone should do if you're playing against a good player and you get table stomped. Ask them a little bit about what. Just say, put your head in your hands and say, please, sir, what should I have done? And and see, so he, he 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 gave me a few a few tips. Um, but I think I need a more maneuver list. Like a lot of the tips he gave me was maybe I should take uh, more of the canary and 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 maybe move the take the iron scale and so on. Um, but yeah, ask your opponent afterwards, see what kind of advice you can get. So going to the final thoughts, so I mentioned it a couple of times, but you def I, I definitely regretted taking the Medusa. The plus one to cast, it didn't make all that much difference. It's a hard spell to get off mind raising. You need an eight, but I feel like it's more of a luxury. Oh, okay. Like it's when it goes off and your unit gets in, it's amazing, but. And like the, 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 the rend is, yeah, like going up to rend three on Marathi is great. Yeah. 
but I've got mortal wounds coming. So if if there's something with a really high armor save, mm -hmm. the fire snakes or the bow snakes could theoretically take care of it. Would that answer have changed if you played a lot against like slaves to darkness who are really strong against mortal wounds but have high armor saves, so you need high rend? Maybe, hmm. but there's 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 a big weight of attacks as well from them. But maybe it might it might be the opponent's I was facing, but I just felt I felt on the narrow scenarios where there's just two or three objectives, I'm fine. But against I think it was a combination of very fast, very maneuverable armies. Like you don't get much faster than Iron Jaws or or Bug Sylvaneth. Uh, maybe some Iron Nephilists or maybe some like really seek heavy slash lists, but they're just so fast. Um, I think I, I know that if, if you've got the run in charge, they go to a threat range, they move eight, they run six, that's four, 14. Mm -hmm. And then they could they can charge, maybe an average charge is going to be, they got plus one to charge as well. So an average charge seven or eight, they've got maybe like a 21, 22 inch threat range. Mm -hmm. That That's quite far. And you just need, you don't need to get, you just need to get one in and at least you can pile in, get a few attacks in and get your, your, your turn to crystal attack in. So I, I think that would have been better because you can also give him the arcane tome. He's still getting a cast. It's one less on bind and there's no plus. But I think I, I think in next time I'll def I'll definitely do that. Also my my iron scale juice model is a bit prettier because I painted <laughs> painted more recently. So that that, that might that might be a, a a thing that I could do. Um, oops, sorry, I'll go back. Uh, Calibron is something that I might cons I think I'm gonna consider it as well just for the movement. Mm -hmm. Because I I never thought before that you get the plus one to charge from, from turn two. So you're you're teleporting, but it's only an eight inch charge re rollable. Oh, okay. So that's probably I think I think the nine inch one re rollable is like forty eight percent or something around there. So it, it's gonna help a little bit. Maybe it goes up to like fifty five percent or so on. But that that's the thing to do. And if if you did it with Marathi or something, if she fails it, it's not the end of the world. You haven't taken any damage, and they can either move away from her, but she moves fourteen, or they can hit her, but she doesn't mind being hit because she's in combat and she's fighting back. So I might try Calibran later. Just, just I think that that might be a good thing to do. The withering, I cast that a lot of times. What does that do? It just because it's. 18 inch um, plus one to wound against that unit is really useful. They they get plus one to wound at turn four, turn four, but uh, oh, yeah, I found I found it really really good. So to so definitely cast that spell a few times. Mm -hmm. um, be careful with Morathi. I was lucky this this tournament. I didn't miscast uh, with her, but in my practice game on the, on on Tuesday, I miscast twice. I did five models to myself. So I, I took off almost two turns turns from it, which was not, not good. But I, I learned a good lesson. So sad, right? yeah. It is sad, but I learned it. would be better if she yeah. wasn't a wizard. Because yeah. she could have miscast and just beat people into it. Yeah, but I mean, she's, so she's, 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 she's got some good spells. Her wash ghost spell is great, just popping out some mortal wounds and so on. But but I, I did learn from that, don't cast spells when you don't need to with her. Uh -huh. So there were, there, were a few, there, were, there were a few turns I just... I cast no spells. I was like, I, I don't want to do that. I guess the the Beast of Chaos player, she got onto eleven wounds. So I had my turn. I didn't cast any spells. Of the chance but, yeah, the and I didn't need to. If there's a really important spell, it's probably worth the gamble. But if if it's just casting Arcane Ball or Mystic Shield, maybe maybe maybe, maybe skip it. So that, that that's that's one thing to do. Um, another you good. You got to risk it for that chocolate biscuit, man. So, so tight. Think, nah, you're just ward say that it's fine. <laughs> it's, 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 it's so tight. Uh, another good thing that I kind of learned, I I tried to do this with Little Marathi, didn't work out. But if you want to tie up something with Little Marathi like the Incarnate, her spell Seed of Shadows is really good because it makes her move 16 and fly. Mm -hmm. So so you could move her up to an Incarnate or something and get, get a good char charge up. Oh, yeah. um, things that I kind of learned and maybe might be helpful for other people is. Uh, a few times, like when I when I moved into that terror geist in the second game, I wouldn't have killed it anyway. But I forgot I got mind razor. I, I got a plus one damage because I charge. I got plus one rend. So it might have made a difference. It might not. I won that. I won that game, but I could have lost that game. So uh, and a, a couple of times I forgot. I forgot about. Uh, I had the withering on, or or, or so on. Um, 
and sometimes I forgot I thought oh, I've got plus one to hit so there's no point using command ability but I forgot about the uh, exploding sixes daughters of Cain command ability so when you've got a big combat I would kind of advise don't get too excited just take a look because I had the tokens I, I got a mind raiser token and so on just take a look around at the tokens breathe think oh do I have any command abilities uh, that I can do not every single combat because you'll never get to the end of the game but just on those big ones really really t to take your, your time and, and have a look with it um so yeah that, that, that's kind of things that, I, that i've decided to take take away other thing i need to get some iron jaws practice i've played against them twice i've been mercilessly crushed uh by the power of the wah twice so i need to get in some iron jaws practice hopefully with maybe with this guy oh yeah iron jaws and an incarnate i'll bring that against you <laughs> all day um, so the, the the last thing I promised the 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 final list. So the our event was won by Daughters of Cain, hey. but not my Daughters of Cain. So uh, this gentleman here, uh, Baz Norman Jr., he, he was a very nice nice yeah. guy. Baz was awesome. He was always just really chatty, really helpful, really nice guy. Yeah, it was a little. I I plucked his brain a bit about about some some daughters tactics and a bit about less. Uh, he's ranked one of the top, if not the top, daughters player in uh, in the UK. And uh, our TO uh, christened him the Scourge of Hull because uh, I think he's been here before. He won this time. Oh, he just uh, keeps coming and winning yeah. tournaments. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if he won last time or not. No, he, he might have, but he definitely did well. So I think that's why he got the name the Scourge of Hull. Uh, he's taken quite a different Daughters list to me. Uh, he doesn't have any bow snakes. He's taken the Incarnate instead. Um, and um, hey, fifteen blood sisters, same as you. Yeah, same as me there. So he's going with he's going with the big block. So maybe the big block is the way to go with the blood sisters. Uh, I overheard him saying that he was really impressed with them. And in the mm -hmm. final game that he played against the Silver Left, the 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 beat me. Uh, he managed to to beat them. Uh, he he's. He know he 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 said that the Bloodless sisters did a lot of the work and uh, Marathi didn't do as much in that game and I think Peter was avoiding Marathi so it's a bit of Peter's play as well. Uh, but I was talking with Dan while that game was going on and Dan was saying like for for a lot of people maybe the Incarnate isn't worth it at 480 points. He had it in his list too, but he's saying like 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 a play like like Baz really knows how to use it and get the most out of it. So I mean he won the event. So he obviously did really well with it, uh, but he he's a much more fighty list. But he's he's got the Medusa Iron Scale, um, which would give his blood sister a bit more range. So so that might help him deal with that list. On the loose side, Iron Scale, right? Yeah, and he's also got a he's also in Calibron, so so he he can teleport. I think he he was teleporting Marathi, but I didn't get to see many of the games because obviously I'm playing at the same time. But looking at his list, he's got a bit more punchy power and. And it looks like the widest scenarios can probably get there. He doesn't have the bow snakes, but um, I think probably you can just get to them and kill them uh, quicker. But also him probably having more than 100 games in and just being one of the best players in the UK would probably probably helped him a wee bit as well. Uh, but it was great to be able to to pluck his brain for that. That's cool. Uh, but yeah, it's good, great. Yeah, congratulations to Baz. Yeah, congratulations yeah. to Baz. Good job. Uh, see you guys next time. Thank you yeah. for tuning in. Uh, please like and subscribe. Bye-bye.